Awesome. Everybody, it is 8.30, and uh, Dean, would you like to uh, well, lead honored. us in the, in the pledge? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you, everybody. It is 8.30, and it is time to start the Mitch County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, March 5th, 2019. Uh, we have an agenda here in front of us. Looked it over. I did get quotes from um, <clears throat> Kingston Life for that life insurance when we had the meeting with them. They were going to get quotes for different oh. policies at two hundred thousand and thirty thousand. So I do have those quotes that she sent me to give you guys. If you want to discuss them and um, they want to come and talk to us if you want to make any changes. So would you like a slot here today? Yeah, if you want to put one just to discuss like group life insurance. So we'll put you at like nine and a half. Sure. Would that be fine? Yeah. Or would you like it sooner? I don't care wherever you want to put it. Okay, we'll get you at nine and a half. And three A, I'd like to request to have that deleted because I have not heard back from ISAC <coughs> or the other counties that do have resolutions like that or discussions like that. So maybe you want to put that instead. It's three A. All right, then why don't we'll just slide you right up to three A position, okay. Shannon? Mm -hmm. We'll have you there, and you can. That's what we do. We change the things on the road. Yeah, it hasn't been on the road before. Mark has it. Okay, good. Okay, is there any other changes or additions? If not, motions to approve. I'll make the motion to or so move to uh, approve the agenda. Second. Second. First and then seconded. Uh, Barb. All those in favor. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Mm. Approved. Okay. Approve the minutes of February twenty sixth meeting. Is there any? Mm. Additions or corrections to that? Sorry, I missed it, but couldn't be helped. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. So, so I'll, I'll move to fix up to our minutes too. Or does made a motion, and I guess I will be the one that seconds that. Ooh. And uh, we'll have a roll call vote on that. Aye. Mark and aye, aye. Uh, so that's been approved. Don't uh, forget me. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you weren't there. But no, it's still vote on it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. Um, apparently, I don't see a county attorney here. So we will let Shannon have the floor then. So we'll give her that okay. spot right away. First off, um, what Lowell did show me is that in regards to Mark's comments on the resolution, the first resolution is not legal. We found that out. They told us we had to incentivize it, and that's what we rewrote it as, and that was a recommendation from Kingston, and so we did get it from an official, so that's what we were asking him to review, is that we're saying they get an incentive if they do it, but they're gonna, be char they're gonna get charged if they don't, or they get incentives if, if they do it. So it, it was technically, Kingston's reviewed the new resolution that we had, the second draft, and she said that was okay. And also in talking to county or to the sheriff, um, one way we could we're not take money away from the people, from the employees, we could say instead of getting the 125 a month, <clears throat> we would take it out of there and give them give them less money. So we wouldn't be asking them to give money back to the county. Their 125 would then become 100 or 75 to that family. So we would not be taking money out of their take home pay. It would be beforehand. Yeah. So. Right. Just to address that, comfortable with that, right. and I can send Mark that information too, that as well. Um, okay. This is during that that meeting with Kingston when we talked about all the health insurance rates and all that stuff. They had we had a discussion about that. I know from 
24 years ago, the county health um, life insurance was a $10,000 policy. And that is not for the employee, that is for the families. And um, it doesn't cost a whole lot. We've kept that $10,000 life insurance policy for 24, 25 years. Um, the current rate in that first column is was on the bottom, $218.45 was the monthly premium for all the county employees. Mm -hmm. So that's $2.85 for that $10,000 policy is what it costs us. And that's a, a AD and D disability plan is on there too for the amount covered. Um, the rate did go down to $1.99. So to keep it at 10,000, it's gonna cost $2.29 an employee. Um, we had asked them to just check and see if what 20,000 and 30,000 would be. And to get a $20,000 policy on all the employees with the cheaper rate would be $4.60 a month to get that policy. And then they threw in the 30,000 would be $6.57. So, and then on the back side they did say we don't have a long-term disability. I mean, they're working Scotland up for long-term disability. Those rates are um, per hundred dollars of payroll. I didn't even look at that because that's out of my real house, so I'm assuming. So they sent that out and just was wondering if we would like them to come up and talk to you guys about it. If you'd like to make any changes on the health insurance. It would still fall within the thousand dollars that the department's put in for employees for insurance expenditures that includes health, life, dental, and all that stuff. Either premium four sixty a month or two twenty nine a month isn't gonna mess anyone's budgets up. How much is the life insurance right now? Uh, what we're paying right now for this year was on the bottom, it's 0.24 cents a thousand, that first column. What was that for 10,000? It's for 10,000, so it's $2.85 for an employee. And then the new rate they got was $1.99 per employee. Mm -hmm. That's those last three columns. And he had thought that it would go cheaper the more volume. You know, we got 30,000 per employee, it would be cheaper, but they're still saying the rate for 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 is still going to be. Yeah, 19 cents per volume. I thought he he had told us he, usually you get that sweet spot where it. Yeah. So they gave us a reduction of 0 0.05 cents across the board. So I don't know if you wanted to come talk to you or if you just want to take the reduction and run with it. Our annual premium is going to go down 19 percent if we if we stay at ten thousand dollars. If we go to twenty thousand, that third column, our annual premium is going to go up a hundred. 1591 for the whole company. Comments? I guess I'm just asking if you want me to tell Elizabeth to come, to set up a time for Elizabeth to come talk to you about it. You really can't take okay. any action today, so. <clears throat> any comments? Yeah, that's fine. Time. We just said for ten thousand dollars, a family can't really bury someone this day and age. So it's how much of that it really is it. So okay, I can talk to Elizabeth and just have her get with Lowell and set up the time to come talk to you. Perfect. So she'll have all the graphics and all the cool stuff. So. Yeah, I like a little time to think too. Yeah, because it's not really what they told us. They yeah. thought if we went to twenty thousand, we would get a reduction, and mm -hmm. they gave us a reduction to begin with, and then it doesn't go down. So. Yeah. Is there my name? That's it then? That's it. I'll just okay. ask, tell Elizabeth if you guys would like her to come talk. All right. It's perfect. Ooh. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. <coughs> and it looks like we don't have the sheriff's update. How would we like to have county engineer update? Should we skip him too? <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape. You're no, here. I'm here. Um, just a few updates, I guess. Um, we're still cleaning up after the storm last week and this week also so guys are out plowing pushing snow back we've got the blower running um, <clears throat> so we have that i don't believe our 500 tons of salts come in yet but we're really skinny on salt so hopefully we don't get any more freeze thaw action coming through but uh, uh anyway um so we're out doing that i got this check um it was a restitution check for they must have caught the individual that stole our Mitchell County and the, some signs that we had, welcome to Mitchell County. Um, it's a $265 check from Floyd County, clerk of court. Oh. If it was your guys' sign, 
I'm assuming that it would be your guys' check, but it came to the engineer's office, so I don't know what to do with this money. Whether so, well, what do you think? It yeah, goes into the general fund. You guys pay for the signs, we put them up. It's $265, but I don't know if the signs were completely destroyed or what the deal was or... Okay. So, I guess... I think general fund. Yeah, I put those in the general. Yes. So, well. so anyway, I'll oh. 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 hand it to Shannon. Oh, <laughs> oh it comes out, yeah. Well... The secondary roads, we just stamp it. We don't have to have... Yeah. You want it? Yep. You can have it. Just put it in the restitution. I think you get conservation just got money for pick and farm for the pick and all there's building to clear restitution. Well to put this on for next week, I've got a contract for our uh, paving project south of Osage. The apparent little bidder was Flynn Construction out of the Butte. Um, the apparent little bid, the contract number is one million six hundred forty nine thousand. $293.43. You guys can't act on this. I don't have it on the agenda. I just got the contract. So what we'll need to do is put it on next week's agenda to to award the contract if we so choose an outcome of recommendation. It was how much again? One million six hundred and forty nine thousand two hundred and ninety three dollars and forty three cents. And was yeah. that for five miles or four and that a half? That was from the railroad track to the county line. Yeah. Was that is that four and a half miles or something? Uh, right here, what else? Uh, it'll say on here. It should say on here. 4.5 miles. 4.5. So 366 dollars in a mile. <clears throat> and, uh, and that's six inch? Six inch with the fabric interlayer. And Fabric or uh, fibers in the concrete. Uh, the engineer's estimate was one one million six hundred twenty-three thousand. So I was about twenty thousand shy. So I would have got the word. <laughs> um, so I'll bring you know looking through numbers and stuff. I'll bring the recommendation next week's board meeting, and we can do that. And then we'll have to get this whole electronic signature stuff going again. Okay. I haven't gotten a contract that I can see in our Doc Express <clears throat> that the contractor has delivered the contract back to us yet for signature so I'll check on that too so okay well, we'll have we'll have it on the agenda for next week. Yep. just review and act possible right. action on the contract for that I'll let you keep that copy no, okay. so, other than that uh, we're uh, gonna start working on some uh, some of next year's projects some of these little bridges that we have to replace that we got with our last inspection we're gonna look through some of that stuff and start um, Picking them things off one by one as we go through. So once we get through some of this weather and get to res reset ourselves, we'll start working on some projects again. Looking towards spring. So how many dysfunctional and uh... I just filled that paperwork out. I don't remember. The uh, <clears throat> we have two in our system that are closed. And I wanna say I wish I had that insurance stuff. No, they had it. They questioned us on that. Like, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but we have less than we did last year, I guess, for dysfunctional because we replaced the bridges. So, out of 143 bridges, I believe. So there was, I, I want to say the number, I want to say there's probably less than 25 that are um, this. Uh, Obsolete of, or officially, uh, officially, functionally fun, function. I don't know if it's functioning obsolete or de deficient, uh, structurally deficient. You gave me 23 last year. So That's I'd have to look at the number again. <coughs> it's around that. It, I, I think we knocked some down, so because we had replaced some, so there are probably two or three less than that. So, but these are ones that aren't specifically classified as bridges because their span is 20 feet or less. So we've got to start picking some of these other little ones off and replacing them. So okay. those may be, you be using those will be local rail projects. So if we can rail cars. if we can fit rail cars in there we will, you know, for local. <coughs> yeah. Try to save the money locally there. Yep. And usually with something less than twenty feet it's a little easier to do that than some of the bigger ones. So. Okay. Well 
Well, any questions? No question for me, Thanks. other than tell the boys thank you. They're doing a good job. It's a challenge out there. Things are staying together so far. That's a good thing. We've got majority of them beat, widened out pretty good. That blower guy is starting to bench stuff back. The blower is running. Hopefully we can start seeing some warmer weather. Have we used up all of our uh, snow budget? Or? I haven't looked at the balance lately, but we're probably pushing pretty close. It's a crapshoot every time you budget it anyway. February was snowier than we've ever had for a long time. So, Yeah, the salt's gone fast. I We've used more salt than I thought we would this year. We ordered 2,000 tons and we used all that up. So. Plus what we had to start the winter. Plus we diluted the, the mixture, so we put a lot down. Well, and I will say that, uh, you know, a week ago, uh, I brought those kids back from Des Moines, and we hit some county roads south of us in that that were terrible, and you could just tell when you hit Mitchell County. I mean, we went from going 20 to 25 miles an hour to we could go 45 to 50 miles an hour. And uh, I was on those same roads, and I saw the same thing. It's nice to see good no, roads. But, uh, it comes at a cost, too. I mean, it, yeah. Right, but I mean, yeah. I yep. would hope Mit Mitchell County residents appreciate what uh, you folks have been doing, because uh, you can really tell. I hope so, too. The guys work their butts off. Nope, they long hours. Long hours. Did you ever figure out how many that you had to help during that storm? Uh, no, I think Greg would probably have that number. I was just curious. I know that one time, just going north of St. Anne's for that day, he had his vehicle full and had to go back and get more and so things. It was probably, I don't know, but there was a dozen or so. They said on Facebook there was 25 stranded okay. that he had told somebody. Okay. I guess I heard that too. <clears throat> yeah, that was a, that was a mess. We no, hope we're done for that for this winter. But well, now that everything's piled up, it doesn't going to take much snow and some wind to start plugging things. We'll again. see what Sunday does for us. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, thank you, Rich. All right. Uh, thank see. you. Mark has made it. Would I you got like a, to take the hot seat? I got on a phone call and couldn't get off. So. It was a tax issue. And when you finally get to talk to somebody, you don't want anything else. All right, I'm here. Okay. Do you have anything to bring up? Uh, I, I see the only thing that Lowell has on there for me is that resolution so I'm here to answer questions on it I mean you know you all know my opinion not that I don't think it's a good idea um, I simply have issues of whether it's lawful to do it That's Sh what uh, Shannon tabled it for next week instead I said okay. a survey of counties that do it so I can get the information numbers and then that letter had come from Elizabeth that's the change we made to make it not come out of after tax money, plus we could take it out of the 125 that we can give each employee so it's not asking them to pay the county back money. So it's not after tax money. My only fear is it's $40,000 on the table that if we don't incentivize yeah. it, we're not going to get that discount. And that's yeah. a lot of money. And I understand, but my advice as the county mm. attorney, and I don't know what your proposal is, it's and, and I think it's too late to do it this year because everybody's got their budgets in and everybody's got their health insurance costs in and, and all that stuff's in. But next year you just, you do it the opposite way, which mm. is you increase everybody's premium by $50 and if they participate, they get the $50 back and if they don't, you know, they pay the extra premium. But the resolution has to be this year because it'll be effective for next year. So we have to get it straightened out because we have well, to get that my opinion is my opinion is the county attorney i wouldn't do it if you guys want to ignore that if you want to ignore judy's advice and you want to ignore carl's advice and you want to ignore my advice and go ahead and do it because their counties are doing it you're, you're free to do it but don't look for me to defend you when things go wrong that's all i'm saying i, I want something in writing from an attorney not Know. So when things go wrong, you have something to we've got we, well, we've got somebody else to bring in on the lawsuit. Okay, and I know Isaac did do a survey, so I will get that information mm. from them who, who does do it. And we've got other counties that have and, opinions. 
I don't I don't have a problem with other counties doing it. That just means that you know nobody's upset enough about it to challenge it or or something like that. My concern is like I, I said in that email. If somebody challenges this, then somebody's going to have to be awful upset to do it in district court, federal district court, and it turns out you couldn't do it, well, it's not such a big deal, it's $50 a month, but you end up paying their attorney's fees. Yeah, and that's where it gets expensive. Sam, just so you're aware, I tend to not proceed on the side of caution and I'm kind of thinking the same way as Mark. Oh, Mark and I think a lot, very much alike. Yeah. So and that's why I want to get it yeah. right so yeah. we don't get And like I said, I don't think, I'm not saying I think it's a bad <coughs> idea. Right. I'm just saying the way we're trying to approach it, I think, mm. could lead to problems. Mm -hmm. And rather than rushing something in and saying, let's, let's quit do it because it's mm -hmm. going to cost us $43,000. Well, yeah, that's a lot of money. But in the grand scheme of the, the entire county budget, I don't know what <coughs> percentage that would be. Well, and the reason it was rushed in yeah. is because it was in secondary roads and we didn't want to discriminate between the employees. And we waived the three secondary roads employees that would have had to start paying yeah. it. Well, last and like I said, that's, that's mm -hmm. a little different because secondary roads is represented by a collective bargaining agreement. And they can, they can all... Even if you're not a member of the union, if the union agrees to something like this, mm. even though it may not be uh, lawful with regard to the regular employees, if a union agrees to it, that's that could apply to them. But you know, if all of the Mitchell County employees, mm. even if all of the employees got together and said yes, we'll agree to it, every employee, hundred percent. That's still not enforceable because they're not represented by a collective bargaining agreement. So if we address it through the 125, mm -hmm. which is only received by all employees because of the collective bargaining? Are you talking $125 or the 125 plan? $125. Between 11, plan 11 and plan 8, mm -hmm. in the second <coughs> budget, they went to the lower, higher deductible plan. Mm -hmm. With agreement that they got $125 a month. That's in the union contract, but we give that benefit to all county employees. So if we address the premium through that, we can talk about it later. Yeah, there's it's not the place. Yeah, no, oh, it's <coughs> it okay. the place, at least in my opinion, to have an open discussion about it. Um, the problem you run into, you can always agree mm. to give people something without a problem. Mm. It's when you start taking stuff away from them you know, right. without their consent where it becomes a problem. And the way it's implemented, the way this resolution is implemented now. The old, the one from January, not the second one I gave you, that we gave you with the corrections and changes, the second draft? This is the second. Unless you get something different than I have. Yep. That's the second Because we already have the first ones already. Okay. That was in December. The bad one. Because mm. that's got the changes that Kingston recommended they change it to. Mm. I think it's probably closer to being okay. Yeah, because we know the first one was not right. Yeah. That's the second draft to try to address that and make it not pushing it down the throats. Yeah, let me look at this one. Could I take this ball? Sure. Mm. I think we're getting that's closer. On the back. Yeah, it is. I yeah, think we're that's getting, what Kingston recommended we do from, because then it yeah, incentivizes right it there. and doesn't yeah, make it a penalty. Yeah, I think we're getting closer. Okay. And we need to get it hashed out this year because, like I said, oh. that would affect January forward next year. And we want to give the employees mm -hmm. enough time to know if they choose. So you're talking not implementing this. Tracking now and then the, the incentive or disincentive, whatever you want to do, would be effective January 2020. But it's mm -hmm. from data from 19, so we don't want to 
in 2020 say, hey, you didn't participate in okay. 19, so now you got to do this. It's not fair. Okay, so you're not really talking about this being effective until January of 2020. It's effective now because this is when we're tracking it. It's going to be data from right now, so we want to implement it so that people are aware of it. Well, when do people start have to pay the additional $50 per month? January 1, 2020. <clears throat> I guess I don't understand that. What do you What do you mean by tracking? For wellness, it's through this. This year is not, the way they get their full participation is during their participation of 20, in 2019 will affect what they have to pay or not pay in 2020 because it says they have to fully participate, and that's on an annual basis. So we start tracking in 19, and that's when it decides what we get for discount for 2020. You'll actually be tracking this month. Right. We actually start this. Year. It starts with the uh, finger pricks on the March 12th. This is the first Great. time they have to start doing well with stuff officially. So that's when it's going to start. Is We don't want them to not do stuff this year and then say, hey, you didn't participate. Now you've got problems for because you're going to have to pay. We wanted to give them. So in effect, oh. you're forcing them to participate starting this year. Correct. We're asking them to participate because that repercussions for this year is on next year's. That's why we waived all the, or the board chose to waive all the secondary roads because we didn't, with what my job changed and other things, we had talked about getting an employee handbook so that it affected all the employees, but that never got changed. It was just got renewed the contract. And so the board didn't feel it was fair to just have that for the union guys and not the other. If we had it in fact now that it would be something they have to pay, it would have been based on their participation last year, and that's not fair because they wouldn't have made a conscious decision knowing what it's going to cause, cause them to happen. Well, is there a clear understanding by all employees right now that they have to start participating this year for what's going to happen in January of 2020? Yeah, it's been told by all yeah, wellness. It's a clear desire. Yeah. It's just that some of them are. Yeah, they exactly. all are aware of it now. I think every wellness committee, we have, every department has a wellness representative. And it's been explained. It's supposed to have been explained to all of their employees. We have a meeting today at 1.30. We'll talk about it with wellness. But that was the plan, was they were to go back and make sure that everyone was aware that this is what will occur next year based on participation this year. It would be my advice, if you're going to go through with this, that someone come up with a very clear outline and a very clear time schedule of what needs to be done, by what dates, and things like that. Yeah. And everything now, instead of wellness, being like take a sheet home and track your sleeping or track the colored vegetables you had on your sandwich and stuff, <coughs> we're not doing any of that toddy stuff. They switched to Mercy, so it is all going to be, it's going to be that biometrics finger prick, which we're getting two dates available. That's been told, and sign-up sheets are in the auditor's office, and all employees are told about that. Two lunch and learns, that will or breakfast and learns, that will be made available to the employees, like the roads and conservation, it'll be a breakfast and learn to accommodate their schedules. And then the other employees will have two lunch and lunch that they have to go to. If they cannot do that, then there's an alternative online four to six week program they can do to get that point. But yeah, it's it can all be done in the assessments and everything. It can all be done at work, except for they have to take their biometric thing to their doctor for their wellness exam. And besides that, for the preventative exam. But besides that, everything will be done at work. Mark, it's nothing that it's else. dangerously close to our 9 o'clock okay. hearing here. So, All right. can we, you guys, discuss that? And we have something there for you to read, look through, give us any okay. advice on that. And okay. uh, anyways, uh, it is 9 o'clock. I hate to... Push you off, Mark. You and Shannon had a pretty good discussion there, but 
Uh, it is time for public hearing on the year 19 and 20 county budget. And this is a, we're opening this hearing up. And Barb, we're going to let you have the floor. Do we need to kill the light? Yeah, I probably want her to do it. No, 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 no. We're going to give a presentation on the budget, and Rachel's going to read the slides. I appreciate all questions after we get done with the presentation, please. First slide here is the budget notice that we posted in the paper. Um, we we'll also have a copy of that. <coughs> increase in budget. Number 18, there's an increase of wages, health insurance, and EMA contribution. Number 20, there is an increase in reimbursement to Butler County for the CSS fund. Number 21, there's an increase in conservation department due to Riverside Park improvements. Number 22, there is an increase in secondary roads department. And in 23, there is a purchase of the e-poll books for the elections and other computer equipment. General funds. General basic is at the levy limit of 3.5 per thousand of taxable value. This levy is the same as last year. General <clears throat> Supplemental has no levy limit and is at 1.551 for the new budget. This levy has an increase of 0 .02782. <clears throat> Special Revenue Funds. Special Revenue Funds account for proceeds which are usually required by law or regulation to be accounted for in a separate fund and to be extended for specific purposes. Here is a list of what the funds are considered special revenue. Capital projects and debt service. Capital projects fund is used in acquisition or con construction of major capital facilities and assets. <coughs> 300,000 will go to remodel of county services building and maintenance and the maintenance garage. 660,000 will be used by the Secondary Roads Department for roadway construction. Debt Service Fund is not going to be used this budget year. Rural Basic Fund. Rural Basic Fund is the operating fund for county services benefiting property not within incorporated areas of the county. The levy limit is 3.95 per thousand of taxable value. 
Currently, we have five sheriff deputies in the Rural Basic Fund as well as County Disposal. This fund also gives property tax dollars to the Secondary Roads Fund. The levy is the same as last year at the max rate of 3.95. <coughs> Secondary Roads Fund. Secondary Roads Fund is used for the maintenance and repair of secondary roads, construction, and maintenance of county bridges. Revenues from federal, state, and county. Road use, tax farm to market state. Transfers from general basic and rural basic funds are from property taxes. Transfers from general basic are not to exceed the equivalent of a tax of 16 and 7 eighths per thousand of taxable value. This budget transfer will be 133,262. Transfer from the rural basic are not to exceed the equivalent of a tax of 3.375 per thousand of taxable value. This budget transfer will be 1,249,613. County Social Services Fund. The Mitchell County Services Fund or MMDD MHDD fund, which it was called previously, is funded by taxes based on a levy determined by multiplying $35.18 by the most recently available population. For this budget, the levy will be 0.54693, a decrease of 0.02782. Mitchell County is part of a 22 county social services region. Service coordination services is also included in this fund. 2018 valuations. Valuations are set by the county assessor and the Department of Revenue. Valuation is the tax base to which the rate is applied and over which the levy is spread. Valuation X rate, amount of tax per one times rate, times rate amount of tax per thousand of taxable value equals the taxes levied minus dollar generated by the tax. Rates are set by local governments to generate the desired levy. The 2018 valuation is $683,812,625 with gas and electric <coughs> and $671,170,969 without gas and electric. This is an increase of $23,888,767 from the 2017 valuation. Rollbacks. Rollback is applied to all classes of property. Ag is 56.1324%. Residential, 56.9180%. Industry and commercial is 90%. Railroads have a rollback also of 90%. A new class is the multi-residential three or more dwelling units, apartments, assisted living, mobile home parks. Ooh. And that rollback is 75%. Rollback for this class will continue to decrease by 3.75% until assessment year 2021. After that, rollback will be equal to the residential rollback of that year. No backfill from the state to local governments for a reduction out of those revenues except commercial and industrial, which is prorated. Pro Rollbacks increased for A by 1.6844%. Residential by 1.2971%. Total county levy. The total county levy stated the, stayed at the same as last year, 9.54793. Urban levy is 5.59793, same as last year. Property taxes levied, 5,727,121. From that figure, we subtract 279,660 for the credits of the taxpayers received. So the equation is 5,727,121 minus 279,660, which equals 5,447,461 is the net tax revenue. <coughs> credits to taxpayers. <coughs> Homestead and military credit is based on property value. Homestead credit is for 48.50 times the levy. The state reimburses us 100% back for this credit. 
Military credit is subtracted off the taxable value, and then the levy is applied to the new value. State reimburses us about 20% of the cost of credits given. Egg and Family Farm is prorated by the state so we don't get 100% reimbursement. Disabled Veteran Homestead Credit is given to disabled veterans with permanent and total disability ratings based on unemployability paid, by, paid at 100% disability rate. We currently have 27 taxpayers getting this credit, which is applied against the entire amount of tax levied on the property. Business property tax credit is given to taxpayers with properties that are class, classed commercial and industrial. Wind turbines. They have 130, we have 136 wind turbines in two townships, Stacyville and Wayne. All turbines are assessed at 30% with a 90% rollback. They also receive a business property tax credit. This decreases the value. That value is used to make our debt payments for roads and the courthouse. The total value is $120,861,657. Long-term debt payments. Debt payments are made for roads, pretreatment facility for VBC and courthouse. Total principal and interest payments are $3,708,459. TIF revenue, special assessment, and loss to help make these payments. No revenue from property taxes are used to make our debt payments. TIF, reven TIF revenue plus special assess will be assessments will be three million seven hundred eight thousand four hundred fifty nine. Other debt are the two TIF rebates for the Osage Co-op Elevator and Absolute Energy. Both are ten year agreements. What if we have no TIF? If we had no TIF, we would still have to make the debt payments. To make the payments, we must use the debt service levy since we can't use any of the other levies we already have. If we take our valuation today, we would raise our total county levy to 9.78536 instead of the 9.54793, which is our total levy in this budget. So 880,514,567 divided by the 3,708,459 equals the 2.3743. This levy is in addition to the levies we already use. The wind turbine revenue is 2,481,000 and would not be able and we would not be able to make the debt payments. And here is just the breakdown of the taxes. And are there any questions? Yes. Hi, right, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been much to do about TIP, and I just want some clarification. Mm -hmm. Because in the box on the, on the notice for the budget, mm -hmm. it says, um, TIF tax revenue is $3,776,626. Then, on the back, when, it, when you look at the breakdown, um, on Form 634R, on line uh, 7, it has the, it says, other county taxes slash TIF tax revenues. Now, <clears throat> It says under general, 222353 under special revenue, the 4222 which comes up to the 4444830 Now, my question is this. What is under the general? Um, is that the special assessment that you get from... No, that's the utility replacement tax. That's the utility replacement. Other county taxes like mobile home. Okay, and that's what I wanted to know. And then, when I look at the bond schedule, um, these two things don't kind of don't jive, and that's why I wondered. Um, the bond schedule says that um, that's for information only. No, but it says the debt service and total needed to be paid mm -hmm. is four million thirty-eight thousand seven hundred sixty-seven. That's a payment that will need to, need to be made this year. <coughs> Well, that's more than probably what we'll have to make. But you know, baby, it, it's all an estimate anyway, as far as what tip revenue we're going to get. Well, but yeah, we have to list all our debt. 
and some of that because we refined, refinanced. So I always have to wait until I see what the Bankers Trust gives me for loan payments to know for sure. So we have to include it all, but yet we're not going to just on that back listing. That's just for information. Okay. Well, under debt service for the budget, and I know a budget is an estimate. I understand that. But, you know, you're estimating debt service payment for me and $211,450. And then I see this other. So I was just questioning, you know. And we have TIF rebates, too, that we have to include. That's not us. You know, there's a lot that passes through us that has to show, but it doesn't. Well, then I remember reading when we first went with TIF. And I remember reading all that. And I remember meeting with you, Barb. And mm -hmm. It said that if, you know, before the taxes come in on the wind turbines, that, you know, there are payments that have to be made. The first year, I think, it was nothing but the second year and on before the taxes come in. And I know you and I talked, and you said, and it does say in the TIF information, that if you use money from the general, if you have to use money from the general, then you pay it back as that money comes in, which it will eventually come in to be more than the payments. That's so when you can do an internal loan. Right. And so like local option, when I use that, I can use TIF revenue once we build that up and then pay back local option as an internal loan. So that was what was done? Mm -hmm. Well then, <laughs> about a couple of years ago, I was told by the Board of Supervisors that they just borrowed enough to begin with and well, bonds first to pay for everything to pay right. the interest and the thing. Right. Now you're, you but you're saying that you used TIF well, or local option. You can do it. I mean, they did it that way because we didn't have enough TIF revenue back then, so we had to borrow more than what we needed to make our payments for the first two years. But you also used some local option tax. Not then we didn't, no. Oh. When we did the road loans, we didn't. Okay. And so then when, when, you did the second when we did the pipeline study, we did an internal loan. Okay. And so then mm. that is what we are using local option money and stuff to make them payments and then eventually to mm. pay that back. All right. Then the other thing I wanted to ask is on what line will it show um, under fund balances. What line shows the restricted, the TIF funds? Is that line 36? Right. Okay. Under special revenue. Okay. And then, I had another question. Um, under chemical dependency program, it showed um, $5,450. Could you tell me, I mean, I know Prairie Ridge used to ask, come and ask counties for money, but we don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So what would that be for? Would that have been, and I know that we did come to ask for, we did come to ask for Prime for Life, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, for a three year, and it was 1800, I think Steve mm -hmm. said, let's make 1800, so 1800 times three, and we haven't, I, I was just curious, because it didn't come up, I didn't think, to the, no. that amount. And so that's, I was wondering. That's not that. That's, that's uh, commitments, like substance abuse commitments. Oh, okay, that's for commitments. Yeah, okay. and 1800 is yep. part okay. of that, 5450. Sheriff transports, um, okay. legal and I, services. And I understand that, yeah. 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 But I, I just see chemical dependency services, and I thought, you know. Right, it encompasses yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, somebody else. No. Oh. Uh, so, on, on the long-term debt payment, uh, the principal and interest is three million seven hundred eight thousand four hundred fifty-nine dollars. So, what's the amount of debt that we're servicing? Well, I'm just showing there. That's the amount we're going to use to make our payments for the courthouse, the roads, and VBC. So how much is that debt? Three million seven hundred and fifty. Isn't that the payment? That's the payment. That's the payment. Yeah, that's principal and interest. Right. Mm. But how much debt are, the total are, 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 yeah, how much debt we have left? Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, you'd have to go in there and we'll have to look at it. I don't have what the total debt is left on everything. Yeah. So that uh, we make these reimbursements to the elevator and the absolute. <coughs> so can you explain how that works? Well, they come, we send them a tax receipt, but then we also have to do a TIF district because then we have to put, use their increment to make that money we have to give them back. So then the treasurer, when they, once they make their payment, tax payment, she's got to figure if it's either 80%, whatever that percent was in the TIF agreement, that has to be paid back to absolute. So, so how much are we paying them? Well, this is the first year, so I'm not quite sure. It's based off of what they paid in TIF or what their tax receipt is, and then they take that oh. time. But then we do an estimate, which we're guessing. For this budget, the absolute will We'll get 352,033 from absolute. So then, like I said, that's 95%. We have to give that back. So my pay quit working when you're. Oh, you can use that. <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> so we, we give them back 95% of their taxes. Mm -hmm. And that, that was how many dollars? 352,033. That's a guesstimate. Because sure. you don't have the yet. And then for the elevator, it's 52944 And they, I think it's 80%. That's 80%? That was 52,000? 52,844. Okay. So, and then on the water treatment plant, uh, Valent, do we go ahead and make the payment and then Valent reimburses us? Is that how that works or how does that work? They, no, do they make the payment? They make the make our total debt payments on the pre-treatment, Valent does. But they don't get enough TIF revenue to make the payments, so that's when the special assessment kicks in to come up with the difference. Mm -hmm. So then in May, we have to assess Valent for the difference. <clears throat> and if, if they're late, do they pay the in and we have to pay additional interest? Do they pay that or, or do we? Okay. Okay. So then the total valuation we, we have what's used in the journal, less the gas and electric, and then, and then the total valuation in the TIF with all these put together with the wind turbine and everything else is, is a little bit over $200 million uh, in addition to that. Do you know what that figure is, 200 million? Thank you. I have one other question that I should, forgot to ask you, but uh, were either the 2009 or 2010 series bonds, uh, have they been paid off yet, or what was the length of time for those? Was it 12 years, or um, they been they re refinanced? refinanced? Yeah. Okay, so that extended it out. Yeah, so that extended it out, but um, they're... But we can call, they have call dates. Okay. So that we can start paying ahead. Okay. Wanted to. Then, was TIF involved in the gas pipeline? Mm -hmm. And how much has that paid out totally <coughs> for the gas pipeline? Oh, well, probably a little over 100000 is all. Okay. Which they stay. That, that was with 
That was with Worth mm. County, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I saw about 40, uh, over 100,000. Yeah. And our share was 50, I believe, 50 some thousand. Uh, some which higher. part of that will be reimbursed by the state with that uh, $250,000 grant. I thought somewhere I saw something about 40,000 stamp. Does that sound right if by the time the state paid back something? That or? could be. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Dean, go ahead. Somebody else got No, no, Dean, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Hey, Barb, on this right here, on, on item number seven, where the tip is, mm -hmm. to the right there, it's got a minus 15.56%. Line. <clears throat> uh, line number seven. Mm -hmm. well, that's because the actual is higher than my budget. So that's Ooh. where it's getting the drop. And the actual had an older control loan in it that year because we were trying to fix the older, which you obviously uh, know about. Yes, I do. <laughs> so um, we had to pay that. So we got our money for that, and then we paid it out in the same year. So in that case, you really look at the actual, and then you look at this, and you see that's where the percentage difference came in, see, when you look at That's your same thing. No. That was borrowed locally. That's the budget notice. Okay. Yeah, I thought Valen was paying for the over control. Valen did pay for it. But we had to borrow money from the bank first, yeah. so we could pay oh, when we were doing the order control. All right. Is Thank there, you. Is there any other comment, public comment, questions? You'd be disappointed have, if nobody someone. made comments, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, I wonder what was wrong. <laughs> Stanley? Thank you, Well, this basically. Last year, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stan. Well, basically, on the bottom left hand corner of the first page, it does show countywide levies to be at $3,757,000, uh, tax revenues to be at $3,767,000. Uh, again, there's a few people in the public that continue to explain that uh, uh, TIF is not being utilized properly. Uh, they feel that uh, TIF has been abused or that. Uh, when you take a look at those numbers, you'll see that uh, basically uh, uh, right now, 40% of our, uh, uh, what would amount to 40% of property taxes uh, is TIF revenue. If we did not utilize TIF revenue, uh, instead of having $3,767,000 worth of monies to use in the county, uh, your city taxes represent about 10% of uh, general basic. In the rural, uh, it's 14% of uh, general basic. Uh, general basic could be increased by that 10% and 14% or around uh, uh, $376,000 and basically what we're saying here is almost $3 million a year of monies uh, that we're now utilizing in the county would be lost to the county mm. and I can't emphasize that enough that uh, if people have a good understanding of the use of TIF why would you want to not utilize $3 million for the county benefit and uh, basically uh, uh, put a, another pro, uh, to other governmental agencies when we also have a need for it. Uh, and uh, item number 26, again, was debt service. Uh, I think you pointed it out, Barb, but I want to make it perfectly clear again. Uh, that $4,211,000, a little of that is uh, debt service for secondary roads. When they buy uh, equipment, they do some borrow some money so that they can uh, buy equipment. County Conservation also has uh, a little of that money. But the majority of that is not being paid by the taxpayers 
the rest of the taxpayers in Mitchell County. The majority of that is being paid either by Pioneer Prairie Wind Farm or by ballot. Uh, it is not on the back of the taxpayers. So when there's a couple of individuals in the county that keep on hollering, the county has all of this debt. Where's the debt? We're not paying it. I don't know how we can get that through, but we're not paying that debt. Mm. Betty. Well, I think you did say, though, that um, there will be no debt service on your tax. And that's where I think, you know, when people see that, that line, I mean, you want to be sure to, even though the conservation on the roads might have had to borrow something to buy it their stuff. But they're paying it within their budget. They're paying it within their budget. That is not, they can't, yeah. and use additional level. Right. And then I think maybe you need to really express also that even though the rural basic can go up, that there are limits on the uh, three dollars and fifty cents on the general and three ninety five on the roads. And those absolutely can't go beyond that. So they do need extra money. They can if you have an emergency. Yeah, an emergency, yeah. But I mean otherwise generally and so that's where you know, it, it doesn't generate nearly enough money to take care of the, the roads and the things that we need to do. <clears throat> Even with the, temp, the gas tax and with the road use tax fund money, you know, so, yeah. So, Barb, if, if, you, uh, if you take, uh, let's say we added $5 million more of debt and the, the revenue that we're getting now is basically just servicing the debt we have. That's all I'm asking for. I could ask for more if I need it. How much more could you ask for? I don't know. Would it service? And it's always a guesstimate, you know, at this time of the year, because we don't know what the levies are going to do. and. Try to you look in your crystal ball, crystal ball, and hope you're. But that's why I do not have the fund balance for TIP so tight that if for some reason my payment did come in higher than I thought, then then I can't make my payment. But I am so thankful we have local option money because that's helped me out tremendously to make my debt payments. I guess I'd just like to make a statement, and I would say that I think you did a nice presentation this year, and and mm. I, for one, I think the county is doing a good job, and uh, I thank you. Well, along those lines, Betty, um, Iowa State Extension uh, Office here in Osage, and I'm not sure who else is mm. part of the sponsorship, you know, Town and Country Breakfast again is the 21st. Mm. and. Uh, uh, one of the speakers is going to be uh, one of the department heads, uh, one of the professors from Iowa State University talking about basically uh, economic issues, I believe, uh, uh, and how uh, uh, Mitchell County has been affected and what we should continue to do. I would encourage each and every one of these people uh, to buy the $10 ticket and attend that breakfast on uh, the 21st. Oh, can anybody go? I believe so. Oh. Yeah, I think if you, all you have to do is go Just to extension. Just pay the money on. <laughs> go to extension and buy a ticket until they oh, run out of tickets. Okay. But uh, some of these naysayers, I've been trying to encourage some of these naysayers that uh, mm. we'll find some tickets for them because I would really like them to sit down and listen to what really is happening here in Mitchell County from outside people that have studied what, I mean, they studied the figures, they studied the facts. And uh, how do you dispute? Yeah. What's the date of that breakfast again? Yeah. 21st. Mm -hmm. It's a Thursday morning. I think it uh, starts at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. Well, you can get up, Betty. I'll give you a call at 5 when I, we get up. I'm up at 4. <laughs> I'm up at 4. I just your lights, were, your I lights weren't on this uh, yesterday morning. <laughs> you know what? I'm watching TV. <laughs> I don't have to have my lights on to watch my TV. It's on all night. <laughs> Melissa, you have a question? Yeah, um, I don't know. Are you going to go through each of the budget items, Barb, or are you done? You want to explain 
So no, I, I just had a question, but I didn't know if this was the appropriate time to ask. I was just wondering where the um, renovation for the county services building is budgeted. Capital yeah. projects. It was on that screen. Yep. Okay. So that has been budgeted for for mm -hmm. FY20. For okay. three hundred and seven thousand. Yeah. Remodel of the or remodel of the county mm -hmm. service building and the garage if we do it. Okay. You know we have to put it in. It doesn't mean we're going to do it. But. Sorry, I missed that. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? <coughs> Lowell, do we close this yep. meeting then? Correct. It is, looks Nine, like, 9.34 or 35. And I guess our next on the agenda is the approval of for year 19 and 20 county budget. Uh, since we're going to have a healthy balance at the end of uh, the 19-20 county budget, it looks like... Uh,